Good morning, distinguished members of the County Commission. My name is Q Rose, and I come before you today foremost as a student of history and second most as a student of the University of Las Vegas, Nevada. Grave are the circumstances in which I address all of you today, yet for all of the uncertainty and dismay, I stand here before you as a free man in a democracy for the people, by the people, and of the people. Celebrate not, however, the fire of our republic, for it is but an ember of our former flame. Our country is dying. However, the con however, our country is dying, a culture of apathy and disinterest. These things are plagues to a prospering nation. And while our country lies broken and in ruin, we make sacrifices on the altar of consumerism, misplace our values, and bear a false sense of loyalty in our nationalism. Where once a man was judged by the fruit of his labors and the actions of his character, he is now judged by what he owns, what he earns, and his ability to fit in with social groups. In a society that has forsaken individuality for conformity, we have lost that quintessential attribute that has made us a country of special significance. While we may not possess a singular sense of nationality, akin to that of England or France, it's our different senses of perception and ideology that allow us to expand democracy in ways that have never been attempted before in history. Yet as our country enters its 238th year, a looming and ever-present force threatens to kill our precious republic in its infancy. Tyranny, tyranny has always served as the antithesis of democracy and continues to even today. However, today that tyranny is ever so more subtle. It comes not as a cry, but as a whimper in the form of a simple act of legislation. And while this tyranny is being perpetrated, our media is consuming itself with the lies of the unofficial aristocracy and the praising of an administration ready to put its own people in chains. The National Defense Authorization Act is nothing less than a declaration of war against the American people, claiming the United States is just another battleground in the, growing war, in the increasingly frivolous and misguided war on terror. Under the NDAA, Americans found to be terrorists, associates of terrorists, or terrorist sympathizers may be imprisoned indefinitely without trial or due process. The most horrifying part of this policy being that nowhere in the NDAA does it give a clear and concise definition of terrorism, meaning that the cases in which this policy can be used is up to the discretion of the federal government. Freedom of speech, political activism, and violent acts against our government. These things will become one and the same if this bill is to be passed. Just as the Federal Reserve Act and the IRS Act were signed into law quietly during a Christmas congressional break by Woodrow Wilson, the NDAA Act has received little to no media attention and therefore very little resistance from the American people. Only now, instead of placing immediate debt on our currency and indenturing the American people financially, the NDAA seeks to physically restrain those who do not act in accordance with the will and desires of the United States government. All, of course, under the banner of national interest. I have come before you today to implore you, no, to beg you, to stop this madness before America is destroyed forever. Thomas Jefferson famously said to remain vigilant. Too many have hidden the truth and the light of our liberty dims with each passing day. We must not allow ourselves, like the Romans of antiquity, to be plunged into an empirical tyranny under the guise that one man or entity may speak on behalf of a nation. I leave these things with you in the hope that democracy and freedom may not become relics of the past, but promises of our future. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Uh, let me ask for a show of hands. Is everyone here speaking in favor of item number 38? Is anyone not speaking? Is anyone speaking in opposition to item 38? Okay, for, just for the record, we will not be taking a vote on item number 38 today. This is an introduction of the resolution. We'll be bringing this back in two weeks to take the formal vote on this item. Now, if we want to get one or two, if everybody wants to speak, I'm going to allow everybody to speak. But if we're just, we're not going to be able to take action anyway today. So it's going to be up to the people in the line, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. Is everybody still going to speak? Okay. Can all of you hear me? Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, good morning, Commission. My name is Adam Sanico. I am a uh, student at, uni at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Commission, allow me to um, give you a brief synopsis of why I'm speaking here today. In 2011, President Obama passed the NDAA without warning or reason. Much like the secret resolution that created the Federal Reserve without any debate under the Wilson administration in 1913, the people of this nation were caught off guard by the executive action that gave the NDAA life. Why? Because this bill gives our government the power to turn America into a despotistic regime that greatly reflects the, des this, the dystopian society that great authors such as George Orwell warned us about in books such as 1984. Under NDAA, the federal government has the power to lock away anyone they want without any care for that individual's right to due process. With NDAA, the government is judge and jury, and, and the verdict will always be guilty. 
Sadly, this is only the beginning. As Senators McCain and Graham pointed out days after the passage of NDAA, the government is granted the authority to apply the measures of this law to Americans. NDAA literally gives our government the power to strip away the constitutional provisions of the Fourth Amendment in due process from the very people who live in a country that was founded on the principles of liberty, volunteerism, and self-rule. It's no wonder that after the passage of this legislation, Congressman Justin Amash stated on air that the NDAA was the single most unconstitutional act that he had ever seen. Commission, if you do not believe that the federal government would ever attempt to use this law to label Americans traitors that should be locked away, consider this. Since 2009, acts have been passed that have habitually labeled liberty activists as extremists. 2009's MIAC, 2010's DOJ report labeling constitutionalists as extremists, and military reports that define protest <coughs> and activism as forms of low-level terrorism. Technically, if the latter of the items I mentioned was ever upheld, the speech that I am now giving could be deemed treasonous. To the Commission members who are seeking re-election in 2014, I urge you now to consider voting on this measure. If we are going to work to restore the principles of liberty in this country, we cannot rely on the centralized nature of the state to do it. Rather, we have to embrace the principles of the Tenth Amendment and state nullification, thus allowing us to avoid any attempt by the status in Washington to treat us as enemies. Before I finish my speech, I would like to quote Ludwig von Mises, one of the modern founders of the Austrian School of Economics. He himself understood the nature of evil from governments. He lived through the towers of Nazi Germany, and he said in a famous quote that man should never give in to evil. I am asking you to take this quote to heart and to do the same. Thank you. Thank you, sir.